Hi, I'm Representative Deborah Entenman from the 47th Legislative District. Tell me a little bit about you, the office you work with, and how it impacts our community. My name is Larry Jefferson, and I was appointed by the Supreme Court in April of 2021 to be the Director of Public Defense for the state of Washington. We are sort of like the administrative backbone for public defense. Every uh, county and city is actually responsible for their own public defense. And where we play a role is where there's a gap. For instance, everyone has the right to appeal. So we take care of that gap. Or if the state uh, says you're not doing a good job with your children, we hire contractors who are attorneys, social workers, and investigators and experts uh, to defend your constitutional rights. So are you defending the right of the parent or the child, or are you defending the state? Uh, I, our office is responsible for parents. The Office of Civil Legal Aid is responsible for children, and they're just ramping up their program so that it will uh, be statewide, I think, by 2027. Okay. And what do you think that that will mean for the families in Washington State? What impact do you think those changes will make? I think it's going to uh, make a tremendous impact. And I'll just say it in this simple way. If you have a legal problem, you need a lawyer. And so it doesn't matter how old you are or how young you are. If you have a legal issue, you need a, a lawyer and you need an advocate. You need an advocate that's going to listen to you and get you access to resources, and especially resources that help you address the root cause of the issue. Because I can be a processor in court all day long, mm -hmm. but if I don't help with uh, substance abuse issues, mental health issues, housing, uh, any plethora of what people come to us for, and we can resolve those things, and those always don't happen in court. Sometimes they happen outside of court, like with social workers. Our social workers that we employ do amazing work all over the state, uh, just incredible. Wonderful. So I think a lot of people have this idea that the Office of Public Defense is only about lawyers. Can you give me a little bit more about what the social workers actually do with individuals and families? It is so important to my team that uh, our profession is a multidisciplinary profession. So what we, we care about is one client, one team, one dream, all right? And so you need a team. Lawyers are great for saying, Objection, we're not doing that, and this is the law. But at five o'clock, lawyers go home. Uh, they don't help people go shopping. They don't go with people to the substance abuse treatment provider and do the har the, 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 those warm handoffs. Okay. Uh, our social workers actually, you know what they wanted? They wanted a truck so they could help people move. That was one of the biggest issues that they had because people didn't have access uh, to those resources. Mm -hmm. So we had to figure out a way to make that happen. Uh, we've got social workers that are going into hospitals and making sure that moms and children are able to stay together, right? Okay. And they've wrapped it up into, you, you know, take a look at like the first uh, clinic. Uh, they are in uh, Snohomish County. Okay. They have wrapped their services up with, uh, with the hospital so that the nurses are actually doing eat, sleep, and soothe. What that is is a process with folks so that if mom can do eat, sleep, and soothe within 10 minutes, kid stays with mom. Then our team comes in and says, hey, mom, are you ready for treatment? Because you have now, you have a, that bonding connection. Mm -hmm. And then uh, what we're finding is that moms say yes, families stay together, and foster care goes down. So we want to implement that, you know, all over the state in time. So if I'm understanding you correctly, are new mothers who may have substance use disorder kept with their children while they're in treatment, or do the, ch the new babies go someplace close to where their mother is? You know, I don't know all the details okay. about how that works, but primarily mom and baby are going together. Okay. And they're going together in a safe way because we know that that bonding is what is needed for later success in life. If you don't have that bonding, then you, you know the cases that result from that, the, the, the worst ones. Uh, they always start with, hey, I was in foster care and I didn't get the resources that I needed. I was homeless, all those things. And so we want to avoid that on the front, mm -hmm. but if we can't, then we want to make sure we have advocates not only in the middle of the case, but also at the end of the case. So even if you've been sentenced, sometimes you still need access to counsel. And we want to provide that. We, I, I call it birth to death. And, and okay. death meaning the, the actual end of the case. When you no longer have any responsibilities uh, whatsoever and you've done the hard work that you needed to do from, to heal. Because only hurt people hurt people. So, uh, so everyone is in different stages of healing. And so what we really want to do is have processes that are victim-centered. Okay. And victims can get the services uh, they need 
uh, then they're not victims anymore and they get the healing anymore. And so we don't want to wait 30 years for someone to get healing. We want it to start as soon as possible. So what do you say to the person, groups, organizations who say we are just coddling criminals? we are really not helping them and why would we want to spend their money on them instead of the people they victimize? How do you talk to them? Well, as a defense attorney, the first thing I tell my client is to be quiet. And that does not help with accountability. So just because you go to court doesn't make you accountable. Just because you go to court, it doesn't mean that you actually uh, have to reflect and think about what you did. Where you have to think uh, about those things usually isn't some sort of treatment or uh, where you get to hear. The most important thing a person can do that's harmed another person is hear from the person they harmed or a surrogate because then they can gain an understanding about what they did. Uh, sometimes we have cases and they have to go to court. Okay. But in other cases, it's just a matter of hearing. I had a case involving a gun where the victim was very scared about what happened, but my client wasn't able to hear it until he heard it directly from that person. We had to wait 18 months for that. That person had to be looking at 10 years of jail time in order to hear that. But once they heard it, they were immediately ready to take accountability uh, for, for what happened. And we had a gracious prosecutor here in Thurston County who said, that's okay, we can resolve this case uh, at this time, even though the person already testified, because they're willing uh, to take that accountability. So we need to move that, I wanna move the accountability in the discussions as much as we can at the beginning of a problem rather than waiting 18 months, rather than waiting uh, two years uh, to get it resolved. And we need to get it resolved in a way that is, satis that is as satisfactory as possible to the victim by at least being able that they can be heard. You know, when you go to court, you're normally not heard until sentencing. Right. So, and we know uh, courts uh, have been systematically racist. That's a problem. And so what we need to do is be able to look at that at court, which our Supreme Court is taking, doing a really good job at. They're really fighting. There's good case law right now. To, so every public defender should be objecting. But also we need to create uh, avenues outside of court where people can resolve uh, their matter. So you can resolve it yourself. Victim-centered, that, that gets that accountability, and that's safe, and that's equitable. All right? That's what we need. As a legislator, often people come and are asking us, to increase their budgets for more for additional funds. What do I need to know about the public defender's office that I might not know now? And what would be your ask for a legislator at this time? Well, I, you know, I've talked that we want to do cases from birth to death. Mm -hmm. And so what I need you to know is that people need access to that attorney. If they can get access to an attorney before they go to court, think about how nervous you would be going to court if you don't know who's representing you. Right. But if you do know who that person is, we need processes to make sure you know who your attorney is before you get there. We need processes where you can work with that attorney to say, wait a minute, maybe I can take accountability and I don't need to go to court. In Oregon, they've got restorative justice, even on some violent offenses, where they've talked to the victim, made sure it's okay, and they go to the first arraignment, you already know who your lawyer is, and they go, do you want to enter this restorative justice program? Some people say yes, and now they're involved uh, in a treatment response, and we didn't have to waste all that time in court. So it's where, um, so we need to be in the beginning more, okay. right? Like what I talked about with those, uh, with the, the women with substance abuse. Okay. So that was never traditionally the case. We could not, if you called right now, most of my contractors, we can't work on the case. So from you, I need to have that, you to give me that statutory authority, right? Okay. Uh, in order to do that good work. And then when I can prove to you that that work is good with, with facts and evidence, then I'll come back to you more and say, here's other areas where we can use that. So that in 10, 20 years, that's what public defense is. We're in the, we're in the beginning because it's going to increase our access to public safety. We all want to be safe. Right now, if you uh, go to court and your lawyer is horrible and that information isn't on the record, you can't appeal it in your appeal. You have to wait and do a, a personal restraint petition. But you can only do a personal restraint petition if you have money. So what we're doing is we're asking for the legislature to give us the authority to help folks who had really bad lawyers. Okay. Right? Um, we're talking juveniles. Right? 
uh, right now, uh, you have one year in order to file this particular petition. Mm -hmm. If you're juvenile, you don't have access to a legal library because you're in a juvenile facility, but you're serving for a long time. We're asking, we need to be able to serve those, those juveniles. What if you're blind? I don't know. What, what if you're blind? What happens? You don't have a lawyer, and right now I can't represent you. I can't even look to see if you have an issue. And so uh, we need the authority to do that. So, and the other thing we do is public defenders are really suffering right now because of the caseloads they have. Uh, and they should be compensated the same as prosecutors. We need to have parity on all levels, um, all across the state. And we don't have statewide public defense, and maybe that's not something that we're going to have. Mm -hmm. uh, but we can think of different ways to where we have different sort of administrative circles. Because some counties, they don't need a defender every day. They need them some days. Okay. Right? So we need to, uh, uh, so, and it kind of fits in with the one client, one team, one dream. If you've got a team that the lawyer can call upon about what they need for that particular client. So the client's not running around trying to get all these services and going to different places. That's what you hire a professional for. And so that's where we want to be. We want to be that team. Uh, and sometimes that team includes the prosecutor. Okay. Uh, so sometimes that team includes the prosecutor. Oh, absolutely. Because you got to move forward at the speed of trust. How do we know whether some, we want to take advantage of these drug courts? If someone really needs to be in drug court, we need, uh, we need to have that, that prosecutor who has that trust with the defense attorney so that when they get that information, uh, combined with the, the, the medical, the social work, and the family and all that stuff, then the prosecutor goes, yes, I want to use this. We want to do the same thing for mental health. Uh, one of my uh, uh, best prosecutors here in Thurston County, Wayne Graham, I love him. Uh, I, I, he is like my brother. Um, when we get in the court together, we fight. You'll never know we like each other, uh, and that's the way it should be. But on the other hand, we always want to do what's for the greater good. What is going to help our community in the long run? Because uh, f for attorneys, I mean, I can do a trial all day long. But what's more important is that people get healed. Uh, the victim, but also uh, the person. Uh, many perpetrators have been harmed. And so we need to find out what that harm is, and we need to ask what their story is. And that way, when we know that story, they go before the judge and they tell that story and they bring in their family and all those things. This, now the judge can make a good decision about what happens. And we also need to have second chances. Everybody's made a mistake before. Some of the mistakes are really big, mm -hmm. but who you are is more defined after you make a mistake than whether you did a great job the first time. And, and so there are certain folks who rise to the challenge of meeting and getting that accountability and, and just doing great, amazing things. And the only thing they care about, I talk to a lot of folks who serve long sentences, and the first people they care about is young people because they don't want young people to go through what they went through. And they don't want it for them. And so and they would dedicate any resources that they have in order to make that happen. I really appreciate the time that you have taken to explain to me what your office does and the work that you do and as a legislator why you need additional resources and what those resources could do to change our society. I appreciate meeting with you today and I look forward to working with you. Thank you. All right, and I'll just say that I'm your, your humble servant, but I'm not only your servant, but I'm the servant of every person in the state of Washington um, and, uh, and, and so is the Office of Public Defense. Thank you for your time today. Thank you.